Evening, warm welcome back to the channel for all of my current subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet and you enjoy uh, what you see tonight, please um, give us a like, please give us a subscribe, leave me any messages you like. So it's a little bit cold outside, um, so what I've done is I've moved into the house for the moment, hence the, uh, the glass of wine, um, and we are going to be doing, well I'm going to be doing, my best James May impersonation tonight, uh, and I'm going to be the reassembler, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be reassembling the mess that you'll see on the table at the moment, which is actually a completely disassembled uh, Morelli distributor out of a Fiat 500. Um, I'll show you how to put it all back together. Obviously I'll strip this one down in order to clean it up and to um, just make sure all the advanced weights were working properly. And now it's time to put it together. Um, as you'll see as I go through, I have left a couple of parts out in the garage but I'm not gonna bother going out and getting them for the moment. So let me just hit pause for a second whilst I stop the puppy from licking my leg um, and then get the camera on a tripod and we can see what's going on. So laid out here on the table is a complete two cylinder distributor. There isn't really all that much to it, but if you are trying to reassemble one of these Morelli ones yourself, this may give you a clue as to sort of how it all goes back together. If there's something wrong with yours, you want to strip it down. Well, this is what it ends up like. Um, if you're just interested in how um, contact breaker point distributors actually work, again, hopefully there's something here for you to look at. A um, few main parts, this, this distributor actually comes in two section so you have the body here's is the upper part of the body that the rotor arm sits in and you have the lower part of the body here which actually has the drive off the camshaft and they are in two separate pieces and you can adjust the advance by rotating this in here and locking it down once it's all assembled um, we've got the main drive spindle here with these little uh, towers the advance weights sit on you've got the advance plate here advance weights you've got the uh, regulator springs that go on there and numerous other parts that we'll put together later on so first things first is to assemble the main spindle here and we want to put on two of these advanced plates. Now the position that they go in really doesn't matter. They're exactly the same. And all they do is as the distributor rotates around and spins around, they spin out due to centrifugal force. Luna, would you be quiet? Luna. And they will spin the advanced plate round to give more advanced timing. Excuse me, I'm just going to pause this to let the dog out. Sorry about that, man's best friend. Right, um, so the once they're in place, what you've got is the actual advance plate itself. And, and in this particular distributor, you have one pin that's longer than the other. And that locates into this particular hole here. So you can slide it down over the top. And it will lock into place. Now you can mimic... What the advanced weights actually do by just holding the bottom of the shaft there giving that a twist and you can see that the advanced weights swing out now what really happens in real life is that these advanced plates swing out and that adds a few degrees of centrifugal advance or mechanical advance to your distributor to advance your timing as the engine speeds up this particular distributor has no vacuum advance, that's the only advance you've got. Now in order to control them and to pull them back once they've spun out, there are these tiny little advance control springs and they just clip over these little posts here. Let's pop that on. Make sure it sits fully over so it doesn't ping off. And again, the same 
with the second one here. So there they are. As that advances, it pulls, let go of that, pulls the weights back in. So that helps retard the timing as the engine revs come back down again. Now this is all held in place. Stop this top from flying off. There is a little uh, sort of ball, detent ball that is in there already. And then there's a screw that goes in the top to hold the whole thing together. So we'll screw that in there. And that is now one piece. What you can see at the bottom, hopefully, is there is a place for a retaining pin to go. So what we need to do now is we need to actually insert this straight through the center of the upper housing. And in order to drive this, which is driven by this, there is, you'll never see it in there on the camera, there is a pin drive, a peg drive in there. And what we have here is the associated drive that goes on there and we'll just install that by popping the washer over there and the second washer and then the drive itself and here we have the little retaining pin which goes straight through the center there holding the whole thing in and to stop that from springing out there is this tiny little spring that will just get on here. Now there's undoubtedly a better way of getting this on, but as long as you don't bend it, you can pretty much kind of spring it on like this. And it really just acts to stop that peg from flying out. So what we have now is the top part of the distributor there is sorted and we can install it onto the bottom half. And it just sits in there like that. Now, it doesn't quite fit in place until you sort of give that a little rotate and that drives it into the, the peg. So if I spin that now, you can see the top is moving and being driven. And there is a bit of movement here, which is how you actually set your advanced timing. Because it's adjustable depending on the orientation in which you install the distributor. Now the dog is trying to knock my door down, so I'm just gonna have to pause that for a second. Just. Real life guys, real life. It's not all like you see on the TV. Um, so what we need to put in the top here now is the actual part that makes the, uh, the distributor work as a distributor, which is, um, this is a contact breaker point base plate. And these are the points that actually go on there. Um, loads of stuff about this online. Really what happens is these touch and as soon as they move apart, fires the, uh, the spark from the coil so this has only got one location in which it can go which is right there because there are two holes on this side and one hole on this side and the main holes which are these ones here serve two purposes number one is to locate the base plate so I'll just Put one of these screws in fully to hold that in but these screws have a second purpose which is to hold these little clips on which are what clip round and hold the distributor cap on so as that's held in place now i will pop this one in 
as it is lined up correctly. Which means I can then go back around this side and remove that one. Now I can pop the clip over it and screw it back in. The remaining hole there is actually for the screw that holds the condenser in. Now I've left the condenser in the garage right now, so I'm not going to actually fit it. This plate's gone in slightly crooked, so let's just straighten that up. That hole is there now, so it's all good. So what we've got is our points here really could do with replacing this one it's slightly bent on the, uh, the spring Let's just give that a little bit of a tweak there and we have an insulator block now admittedly i left the outer part of this insulator block in the garage as well um, but what you would do is you would install this in here that hole bit fiddly might be better approaching it from this side actually there you go so that is in there and the purpose of this insulator block and the associated one on the other side is it insulates your positive your input here from your coil to this uh to that off camera there this uh would thread in and screw against a second block which again i did leave in the garage and will insulate your coil from the casing because you don't want it to run to earth or it will never spark this spring here sits over the back of that and the breaker points themselves just slide on to the backing plate like that and are held in place with the circlip and I'll just spring this into its final location. Your condenser, which is basically a big capacitor for regulating spark, screws in there and also connects to that. And your rotor arm sits on top. This is actually the wrong rotor arm for this unit. I picked the wrong one up from my pile of spares. But there we have a completed Morelli distributor and that took a grand total of 15 minutes to install with brakes for annoying dogs and brakes for a little drink of wine you can do this very very quickly completely strip it down and all i would need to do is to uh, actually fix those points so i'll probably put the rotor arm back on chuck it into the car and set the timing and then we are all good to go so this is pretty much um, applicable to any of these um these styles of mechanical advance distributors only so bosch 009s the people using volkswagens obviously these early units out of uh, the fiat 500s it's ever such a slightly different setup if you've got vacuum advance um because if you have a vacuum advance as well as the mechanical weights plates 
there would be a vacuum unit on the side here which would have some form of hook that connects to the advanced plate so it can be the timing can be advanced either via vacuum or via mechanical or a combination of both well, hopefully that was um, relatively enjoyable and entertaining um, whether that was just because I had to keep stopping for the dogs uh, hope you learned something um, if you think I've made any mistakes or you want to leave any other comments please feel free till the next time take care bye bye